Hey everyone, what? Wait a minute, how did we get here? Hey everyone, my name is Spencer, and exactly two years ago I decided that I would undertake one of the biggest projects of my life. Let's take a quick listen. With all that extra time, I am thinking about really going forward on a big project for the Mouse House that I've wanted to do for a long time. Since then, you all have followed along as we have worked tirelessly over the course of nine episodes to make my small bedroom function as a living space and studio space. Today, we finally conclude this two-year journey as we create the set from which our future videos will be filmed. Alright, so what's the plan for the set? Well, here's some concept art that I worked up well over a year ago, inspired by someone I saw paint a spaceship Earth mural in their room. This would be complemented by a handmade desk that I report from, as well as a handmade sign. Since then, it kind of became a trend in the Disney community to paint these spaceship Earth patterns on walls. When this happened, I really considered changing the concept for the studio, but I ultimately decided that I'd stick with my original vision. I'd actually encourage you to paint one of these in your house. In a way, it's something that can connect us all. Okay, let's get started with this thing. First up was to prep the wall for painting, and big shout out to my friend who you'll see a bit throughout this episode. She came home with me multiple days after our summer job to help out. We started by scanning and marking the wall for any spots that needed to be sanded down or filled with spackling, and let me tell you, there were a lot. During this process, I asked my non-Disney friend some trivia. Can, can you name the four walls of the parks? From there, we could go through and remove the pieces of tape as we sanded each spot. After that, she went through and filled any nicks or dents with spackling because she was clearly much better than me at it, and while she was doing that, I began taping off for a base coat of black. She eventually joined me, and we spent a few hours taping. Now, we really only needed to paint the wall that was getting the spaceship Earth pattern black, but I wanted to extend it a partial way through the connecting walls and ceiling to give me better control over lighting in the studio. This was the reason we had to figure out how in the world we would get a line taped halfway through the ceiling while being straight and parallel. After many failed attempts to figure out how we could pull this off, we were lying on the ground defeated. Okay, I have a really bad but potentially good idea. What if we measure, and this is probably really stupid, it's risky, but say we measure our 43 on this side and get tape so it's just barely on there at 43. Then we take one long piece and line it up on both of the things. Could that work? No. I mean, does it have the potential? Could, could it maybe work? No. Well, let's do it. <laughs> Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put it on You're the gonna spot. put it on your spot. I'm gonna take it over here and just try to put it on here. And then you hold in your spot, and I will slowly slide through the middle of the room on the side. Up there, or else it's gonna be very off by the middle. Right, here we go. I'm just gonna put my, leave my thumb here. If this fails, we're gonna waste a lot of tape. <laughs> I really don't recommend trying this at home because what we did really shouldn't have worked. I'm sure there's a way better way to do this, but somehow it worked out for us, so I'm not complaining. Wait a second. I didn't push down on it. Wait a second. Oh. No, no. I think we did it. No, we did not. That should not have worked. By the time we figured that out, the spackling was dry and ready for sanding. Following that, my paranoid self went through and added another layer of tape to a bunch of spots, so when I inevitably slipped up, hopefully I wouldn't go past the tape. Then I could remove my TV bracket and outlet covers from the wall. After that, I very thoroughly covered everything in my room with plastic drop cloths, covered the carpets, including the trim with sheets, so I didn't get paint anywhere. With all of that prep work finished, I was then able to crack open a gallon of black paint and start to cut in corners, outlets, and more all around the room.
just had to go through and roll a few layers of this black paint. Now enjoy these few seconds of satisfying tape removal. Okay, it was now time to figure out how to tape out the geodesic sphere pattern on the wall. A large part of this taping process was a two-person job, so luckily my friend was willing to help out again. The first of many challenges was going to be getting horizontal lines taped across the wall at a chosen distance apart. This might not seem like a difficult task, but we discovered that the floorboard wasn't straight, but the lines kind of needed to be based on that. And we couldn't start from the top because I knew we wouldn't have the right height for an exact number of rows, and I wanted the extra to be on top. Because of this, we struggled to figure out how we would pull this off. It's gravity, so it, it can't, can't, be, it can't wrong. be wrong. Well, the, oh, oh. God, you got me. <laughs> the entire room was messed up. Walls aren't straight, the baseboard wasn't level, just a whole bunch of problems that shouldn't be problems. We spent hours trying everything we possibly could. And then finally, after a day of work, we taped one horizontal line. But then after that, it wasn't too difficult. We just had to measure points from the first line, which we could then use to create the rest of them. Everything was going smoothly until the last line. What was that? Was that the ladder? <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> All right, stand back on it. This is why you don't try this at home. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I don't know that there was any other reaction. I was like, and then I put two and two together. I was like, oh, wait, why is he trapped? Did he keep holding you for like a few seconds? <laughs> After that though, we finally wrapped up getting the horizontal lines on the wall, which shouldn't have been a challenge, but everything being off-level complicated it. Next up was to mark out our diagonals. This part was easy because we just needed to know our rise and run, and then we could get everything marked out. From there, I just did a lot of taping. Once the triangles were formed, I just had to divide those into three more triangles. I then painted over all of the tape with one more coat of black paint to ensure that we would end up with clean lines. I could then open up our first gray tone and get painting. After each color, I went through and taped off the finished portion so I didn't risk overlapping colors. This isn't necessary, but I think in the long run it saved me time, plus it enabled me to use a roller the whole way through rather than a brush. Then it was just rinse and repeat till the entire wall was painted.
next up was removing all this tape. And keep in mind, I anticipated to have to do touch-ups, so the slight imperfections weren't a surprise. There were a few areas that ended up dangerously close to ruining the entire wall, but I was able to go back later and fix those spots. Take a closer look at the wall later in this video, but next I switched over to constructing a desk to report from. I sketched out a plan and then got to work cutting. Then up in the studio, I could get to work assembling the frame. With the frame finished, I could head back to the saw, replacing the blade with one that has more teeth. This will give me a nicer cut on the flooring that I'm using to panel the front and sides of my desk. And since I was already outside and covered in sawdust, I cut down the top piece of my desk to size and ripped some bridges. I then painted on a few coats of black paint, and as that dried, I continued to work on the rest of the desk. Next up was making a custom sign to hang on the spaceship earth wall. I rough cut this oval so that I could temporarily glue it to the off cut of my desktop. I could then jigsaw the shape to the best of my ability, leaving the slightest bit of room for sanding. Then, I began the long painting process. For the lettering of this sign, I elected to laser cut my channel's name. I designed an SVG file to the exact size I needed for my sign, and then got it cut. I could then take those letters, give them a quick sand, and spray paint them white. Then, back up in the studio, I could tape out different stripes using a cereal box as the width, as I painted one color at a time. Each stripe took days because I needed to use multiple coats and have them dry before I moved on to the next one. After painting all the stripes, I could then line up the piece I cut my letters from on the sign and use it as a guide to glue the letters centered and the correct distance apart. To make sure that they actually bonded to the sign, I placed a whole bunch of random stuff on top to ensure that the letters were pressed up firmly against the sign. Testing. The lighting looks okay. We are now one step away from finishing the Mouse House Studio. The bracket has been put on the wall, and all that's left to do is 
place the sign on. Thinking that this has been in the works for n probably two years at this point, uh, it, it's been in the works way before I even announced it was happening. And, and now after such a long journey, uh, <laughs> to see this come to an end is almost sad. I'm almost, I'm almost hesitant to put this sign on the wall because as soon as it, as soon as it touches that bracket, we're done. That closes a major chapter of the Mouse House. I mean, creating my dream YouTube studio has been going on since, I don't know, we have probably had less than 200 subscribers, maybe maybe a little more, but uh, to, to think that this has been going on for so long is just unreal. And now it's coming to an end. This, this chapter is closing, but on a brighter note, uh, a, a new chapter is opening where we will be able to film from this studio, I guess. I guess this is just time to come to peace with this ending, you know, it's, it, it feels like I can't even remember a time when I wasn't working on this, where every bit of free time I had during uh, weekends, school nights, whatever, whenever I could find, doing research on all the different stuff we've bought, um, doing research on how I could best do this and best do the sign, all of course while staying within a reasonable budget. I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do when this is done with all that, all that free time that I totally have. All right, let's do it. Let's let's put the final piece on. This incredible journey that has taken place over the course of two years has meant the world to me. You all and your excitement for this project has fueled me to get where we are today. When I started this project as a ninth grader, I was so scared that it was impossible and I was thinking way too ambitiously. Sitting here in the finished studio as a junior, I can happily say to my past self that we pulled it off. There were so many different occurrences where we'd go months without any visible progress, but it all worked out in the long term. Really, this studio project never made sense. Strategically, why would I put this much into a channel with a few hundred subscribers? Don't get me wrong, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you, but investing this much time and energy into this upgrade is such a major risk. Regardless though, we did it. And whether or not this studio and set makes a return on investment, what I learned and experienced throughout the process made it easily worth it. I have you all to thank for that, so sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you all so much for this opportunity. I am proud to announce that the Mouse House Studio is officially complete and ready for production.